The Bible says, you know, Paul then comes in, in Romans and then he gives us what really happened. Because we focus on the sin. But it says in Romans 3.23, for all, including Adam and Eve, have sinned. This one, that's not the end of the story. And fallen short of the glory. So when we sinned, we lost the glory. That's why they were now trying to cover up with leaves. So they now recognize that they were naked and ashamed. Not because they were not naked before, but because the, the, they lost the covering, the glory was covering. So it's important for you to recognize that we lost the glory. So Jesus did not just come to redeem men from sin. It's not the only assignment. He also came to restore the lost glory. That's why he then says in the book of Colossians 1.27 part B Christ in me is the hope of that lost glory. He says, give me the first word there. He did not say looked. He did not say look. Look means look once. Looked means you looked before. There are some that came and looked and left. Present continuous. I keep looking. I keep focusing. I keep pursuing him. The pursuit of Jesus never ends because he's inexhaustible. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher. He is the beginning. He is the end. So I keep looking to him. He's even everything in between. Look unto Jesus. The whole week I know you watch things on your phone. How many of them were about Jesus? Looking unto jokes. Looking unto Nigerian movies. Looking unto Google. No. Looking. Present continuous. That means every day I'm looking. Every day I'm seeking. The Bible says it's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Not that, that seek him. <laughs> Keep seeking. Keep pursuing. Keep studying. Keep researching. Why have you had enough of Jesus? I need him. And I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking. Somebody say, he is my everything. Talk to me. Say, he is my everything. Say, he is my all. Say, I need him. Say, I'm desperate for him. Say, he is my Jesus. Say, Jesus, I need you. I don't know about my neighbor, but I need you, Jesus. <sighs> say, I need him. Talk to me. Say, I need him. Ephesians 1 verse 18 to 20. I love the book of Ephesians. But it says there that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know, that you may know. I need you to know, not just hear, know, gain understanding. Say, I must understand. It says, your eyes will be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. There is hope in being called by Jesus. Your hope is in being called by Jesus. Your hope is in doing the things of God. The hope of his calling. And what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints? There are riches in your knowing him. There are riches in your being called to do his work. You're looking for riches outside of calling. See, when we say calling, people think that, you know, calling is pulpit ministry like what I'm doing here. You are called onto the marketplace right there where you are. Some of you are called to mother the next Jesus. Don't 
look down upon what you are doing. As long as it is a God assignment, it is a calling. It is a calling. You are called to be a doctor in that hospital. It's a calling. There are riches, but they are in the calling. You are called to be a lawyer for Jesus. To represent Jesus. There are riches in the glory of the inheritance of the saints. God has not left the saints without an inheritance. But our eyes must be enlightened. And we must know knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. You can't market a Jesus you do not know. You can't experience a Jesus you do not know. Say, I want to know him more. Say it again. Say, I want to know him more. Verse 19 quickly. He says, and what are the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? So you've gone beyond being born again. Now you've stepped into dimensions of the greatness of his power. Not on him, but towards us who believe that there's more to Jesus than salvation. Now you're moving into the Christos dimension. Into the anointing dimension toward us who believe. According to the working of his mighty Kratos. Of his mighty power. Let me turn it down. Give me verse 20. Which he worked or he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead. And he seated at the right hand of the father in heavenly places. You need to know the location of Jesus. You need to know where he is. You need to know your place in him. So if he's seated at the right hand of the father. And I am seated in him. That means both I and Christ are far above principalities and powers. Thrones and dominions. So in other words, you understand who you are in him. Who you are, whose you are, where you are in him. So you abide in him and he abides in you. John 15. Uh, uh, yeah, I say, Jesus, help me because you don't dwell with him. Did he not send the book of Acts? In him we live. <laughs> In him we move. So you are moving without Jesus. That's why you are having to call for him. If you live in him, if you move in him, then you will have your being in him. Acts, <laughs> Acts 17, 28. You have your being, the essence of who you are. Your life must show us that you are a moving Jesus. He said, I must abide in you and you must abide in me. People must not see where you start and, 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 and finish and where Jesus. It must be an intermingling. There must be no difference because you live in him and he lives in you. And then he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then he says the same power. Not toned down. I see the same power. Which power? Ah, yeah. Romans 8, 11. The same power that raised Jesus. Self-raising power. It, it, it dwells on the inside of you. But let me tell you, you can have animals dwelling in your house and you do not know about them. You can have money dwelling in your house and you don't know about it. Could it be that Jesus is dwelling in you? And the only thing missing is your knowledge that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead resides on the inside of you. Today, I stir up the gift that is in you by the laying on of hands. That's why we lay hands to stay up what is there. But if you do not know that it is there, even if I stayed up, you don't know. Today I stayed up. The divinity in you, Christ in you, a hope of glory. I stayed up. I stir the Jesus up in you through this knowledge. I stay up, Jesus. I stay up the Christ. He is on the inside of you. You must exhibit him. When you get to work, they must say, Jesus has arrived. When you park your car, they must say, here comes Jesus. When they look at you, they must say of you, Rabbi, thou art a man sent by God. John 3 verse 2. For no man can do these things except, except go 
God be with you. I declare and I decree from today going forward, you will do what others cannot do. For God must be with you. Emmanuel, God with us. Not God who came and left. God with us. May he be with you. May he walk with you. May he talk with you. I want Christians, children of God in this house, and walk with Jesus. Not walk with the apostles' direct number. Walk with Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Not having me on speed dial. Don't bother me. I got my own problems. Walk with Jesus. Uh, don't look for me. Look for Jesus. I'm looking for Jesus myself. I need this Jesus myself. I need Jesus. Let's all look unto him. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Focused on Jesus. Seeking Jesus. Studying Jesus. Praying to Jesus. Oh, somebody say, I need this Jesus. Say, I'm desperate for this Jesus. I want more of this Jesus. I can't get enough of this Jesus. Raise your hands and begin to tell him, Lord Jesus, I want to study you more. I want to need more of you. More of Jesus. More of Jesus. It must be obvious. Please be seated. It must be obvious who you've been with. How come we can't smell him on you? Hmm. Acts 4 verse 13 and 14. You behave like who you've been with. Look at me. Have you ever listened to your spouse and they're talking and saying, mm, don't get moms again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they start to speak, to speak about you like in the third person. I mean, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Who have you been with? <laughs> Eve was talking right until she had been with the devil. And God said, Who told you? Who told you that you are naked? Who have you been with that told you that you are broke? Who told you you can't make it? Who told you the money is not coming? Who told you this is all you'll ever be? Whatever you, we hear you say, someone told you that. Who do men say that I am? They talked, but immediately jumped on to what's more important. Who do you? Who is Jesus to you? Is he just somebody who brings some Easter eggs? Who is Jesus to you? And the only Jesus you can tell us about is the one you've been with. So when people look at you and see you, they can tell where you've been. You are a picture of where you have been. Give me the scripture in Acts 4. He says, now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, that means they were splitting one or two verbs. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I know Zidza. Because <laughs> Zidza couldn't let us go Anyway, moving right along. They perceived that they were uneducated and untrained. They were very coarse. I bet a banga kadeo. I da kujiga. But why we don't like them? I bet a banga. Grooming and etiquette. I'm not going to finish in school. I forgot to say, I'm going 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 to say,
But despite them being uneducated, watch this, and them being untrained, there was still a reason for people to marvel. They marveled and they realized, ah, something vetoed the education. Something took over the lack of training. Something was overriding the being course. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They still marveled and they realized they had been with Jesus. So being with Jesus will override where you've been. Ah, yeah. I said being with Jesus will override where you've been. It doesn't matter the mistakes you made. When you've been with Jesus, it is all overridden. You can come from Chiweshe, Shiredzi, or Shimani Mani. It won't matter if you had been with Jesus. It doesn't matter you went to St. Inyoka. Unokonakunda we St. John's Green Blazer. If you have been with Jesus, you will begin to speak English. That is too wonderful for you. Shakespeare, Queen of England, because you have been with Jesus. Because that anointing will teach you things that they only learned at Green Blazer, though you went to St. New You have been with Jesus. See, this Jesus you're ignoring, he can override. Don't tell me it in the Rego Mashingo. Hang around with Jesus. And Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. I want you to walk with God. I want him to be beside you. Saying, here is the way, walk ye in it. A voice coming from behind. Saying, here is the way, Enoch. Walk ye in this way. Enoch walk with God. I want you to walk with God. I know you are working with powerful businessmen. But are you walking with God? When you walk with him, walk close enough to hear his voice. This is the way. Okay. People say, man of God, teach me how to hear God. The answer is simple. Walk with him. Walk with him. If you walk with him, his voice will become familiar. How he speaks to me is not how he speaks to you. I want to hear the way you hear. Walk the way I walk. Close to him. You can't walk with him if you don't have a worship life. Have a, have a, a buoyant worship life. Take all that Tony Braxton stuff out of your car. Seven whole days. Not a word from you. Meanwhile, God wants to give you a word. Seven whole days. <laughs> I'm going to be on my own. <laughs> oh. <laughs> honey, honey. <laughs> Should my drive again? <laughs> Jesus, please delete, delete. File, delete. <laughs> Was it me? <laughs> Who play wasn't me much kind of but we saw you on the watch what wasn't me ah! <laughs> is the said we give you all the glory is that not better wasn't me but I looked you in the eye wasn't me This is the way. Walk you in it. Divine guidance by fellowship with Jesus. What is fellowship? Fellows in the same ship. Don't tell me he's your friend if you don't hang out with him. Acts 4, 14. Say, I need Jesus. 
You see, you've left, uh, you need Jesus for people who think that they need real help. You need Jesus. <laughs> Christ is in levels. There is the fullness of the stature of Christ. Kuzarane Jesu. Just because you are drinking a glass doesn't mean it is full. Tidatu uzare ne hujesu. The fullness. That's why we keep coming to church. Sila basi acha ibere. He says, and seeing the man who had been healed. Somebody said they'd been with Jesus. Now, how do we know they'd been with Jesus? Because they, they, they saw the results. Seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, evidence, they could say nothing against it. Say undeniable results. You see, we don't just want your results to be grammatical. We want no batika. How come no going to pack up Seruk? Boyunzaba Bukum Zaguya. Nika ino tere rakanayaga wana my results. The Gamoda that don't think it's into evangelism. The Gamoda that don't think it's into evangelism. Do you know there are people who Google my shoes? <laughs> and the pastor of my shirt are not Dura. That's another reference for me. My favorite. Pastor, my hundred dollars. Kola jatola bahaya. Zri better than Pastor of my Hey, you tell me my zig. Why? Are you here? So they say things about Jesus. They say things about Jesus. I'll close with this. Who do you say that I am? Okay, who do they say I am? Who do you say that I am? But there are things that Jesus said about himself. The most accurate knowledge of a man is what he says about himself. I know what people said he is. But who did he say he is? <laughs> Number one, he said, I am the bread of life. John 6 verse 35. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Number two, he said, I am the light of the world. John 8 Verse 12. He said, I am the door. John 10. Verse 7 and 9. I'll repeat them. He said, I am the good shepherd. You find that in John 10. Verse 11. And then on that whole Lazarus episode, he said in John eleven twenty five, 25. I am the resurrection and the life. And then he says, number six, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. John 14, it should be verse six. He said, I am the true vine. John 15, verse one and verse five. I am the true vine. And then in the book of Revelations, he says the last three, I am Alpha and Omega. Revelations 1 verse number 8. And then in verse number 11, which is number 9, I am the first and the last. I am the first and the last. And he echoes the same in verse 17 of Revelations 1. I am the first and the last. And finally, number 10, he says, I am he that liveth. 
I was dead. And now I'm alive forevermore. And that's where he tells us that he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Those ten things are the primary factors of who he is. They are not the only ones. But they are the most accurate picture of who he is. Because that's who he tells us he is. Do you know how many things people say about you that are not you? You get there, you set the record straight. So you are setting the record straight. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. We need to understand all of these for us to truly, truly know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, let me say this and I'll close. Acts 14, verse 8 to 11. He said, and in that Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. He had never walked. Next verse. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observing him intently, seeing that he had faith to be healed. Next verse. He said to the loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped up and walked. I decree over your life as you search for Jesus, may this be you. May this be you. I'm talking about you being the one to tell people, get up! When you encounter Jesus like Paul, you can say to people with an impossible situation, get up! Your feet be strengthened. Real, tangible, undeniable miracles. Next verse. May that be your portion. May you be a living epistle. May you be a living epistle. May people, when they encounter you, meet the Jesus who carries power. If he's in me, and he is, and I carry power, which I do, I must exhibit what he exhibits. Now, when the people saw that, saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices saying in that language, the gods have come down in the likeness of men. The gods have come down in the likeness of men. People who compete with you on the marketplace, they, they, must, have, they must have no chance to beat you. Because when they tender in their documents, they are competing with a God. They are competing with a God. I speak this over your life. I declare and I decree. May this be a description of you. The gods have come down in the likeness of men. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to exhibit you. I want to exhibit your power. I want the greater works dimension. To flow through me. Lord Jesus, may I exhibit your power, your grace, and your glory. I need more of you in my life. Jehovah, I want more power, the power of God to flow through me. Raise your hands if you can and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. More power. More power. More of Jesus. People must look at you and see Jesus. They must look at you and see God. If they see God, they'll fear. They must fear you. They must fear to trouble you. They must fear to withhold your payment. They must fear to say no. They must fear to delay you. They must fear to frustrate you. They must see God in you. And that will birth fear in them. I prophesy, whoever has been ill-treating you from today, as you catch this revelation of Jesus, may they see the God in you. May they see the divine in you. May they not be able to take advantage of you. May they only give advantage where they were taking advantage. I prophesy that over your life. Men will change how they treat you because they will change how they see you. 
they will see you as a God on the earth. Even while you're on the marketplace, I declare and I decree, both men and nature will treat you very, very well. I prophesy what happened to Jesus will happen to you on the marketplace. I command uncommon breakthroughs. I declare and I decree it in the name of Jesus. By the mighty hand of God, may you experience uncommon favor, uncommon breakthroughs. I declare and I decree uncommon wealth. I prophesy uncommon wealth. Jesus became poor so that you might become rich. May that be a certainty in your life. May you experience the riches of the glory of the saints. I declare and I decree that which God has prepared for you. May you experience it in Christ in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree the mighty, mighty grace of prosperity that is upon this ministry. May you experience it. I said, may you experience it. Uncommon favor, may you experience it. In the name of Jesus, may you experience it. Wherever the soles of your feet shall tread, you shall possess. Whatever land you are setting your feet on, the soles of your feet. Some of you need to go home and take off your shoes. He didn't say the soles of your shoes. He said the soles of your feet. May you put the soles of your feet on that ground. And may you claim that it's a prophetic action. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. The land that you are walking on, may you possess it. I decree, may you possess it. May you become a possessor. I declare and I decree you become a possessor. As you walk on planet earth, men must fear you. The way they fear Jesus, they must fear you. I said the way they fear Jesus, they must fear you. I declare and I decree. No man this week will be able to stand before you. Joshua 1.5. They will not be able to stand before you. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. The same God who was with Moses was with Jesus. So shall he be with you. I decree he is with you. May he walk with you. May you experience him. May you exhibit him. Listen, wherever you went and doors were closed, I prophesy. Because now you are going with the door. They closed their door. I am bringing the door. His name is Jesus. And that door, Jesus, will open the door. Did he not say, I will make a way where there seems to be no way? I prophesy this week is a week of making a way where there seem to be no way. May you meet the way maker this week. I, I, I prophesy over your life. He said with men. It is impossible, but not with God. That's why I'm walking with Jesus, so that I'm walking into things that are impossible. Mark 10, 27. With men, it seems impossible, but not this week for you. For this week, you are moving with God. I said with God, you can pay for it. I said with God, you can afford it. I said with God, you can achieve it. I said this week, may you produce results. And may you attribute those results to walking with Jesus. Say, I'm walking with Jesus. Say, I'm walking with Jesus. As you walk with Jesus, you are walking with him who is a story changer. May he change your story. I said, may he change your story. As you are walking with him, the same way the hand of the Lord was upon Jesus, may that hand be upon you as you are in Jesus. I said that hand of God is coming upon you. The mighty hand of grace is coming upon you. May his hand be on your hand. And from this day, whatever you set your hands to do, I command it to prosper. I command it to prosper. I decree it must prosper. Everything you are doing must prosper. You will not fail. Stretch your hands. Your hands will not fail. You will handle big things. I strengthen your hands by the hand of God. I strengthen your hands to handle big things in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree. Marketplace breakthroughs. They must happen for you. I said they must happen for you. In Luke 5 verse 5. A great multitude of fish. You will catch a great multitude of customers this week. This week is the week of sealed deals, concluded transactions. He alpha did, he must omega it. 
Uh, every pending transactions, we command Omega. Uh, he offered, he started it, hallelujah. But we command it to be Omega. We, he said it's the first and the last. We command the God of conclusion. May he conclude transactions for you. May he help you to conclude transactions. In the name of Jesus. Every financial trouble you are in, I declare and I decree that miracle where Jesus said the first fish that you catch, Peter, open his mouth. This week, this week starts today. This week starts today. I said the first fish that you catch, may it have all the solutions. May it have all the solutions. May you come out of debt. I said may you come out of debt. May you come out of debt. I said this week, may you come out of debt. I prophesied this week, may you come out of debt. Everyone you owe, I decree transactions that will help you to pay. I prophesied the anointing of multiplication. Oil will multiply. Oil will multiply. Yours is to get new jars, but oil will multiply. Uh, getting the, 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 the jars is natural, but the multiplication is supernatural. May God add super on your natural. May he add super on your natural. Where you are putting effort, may God put kadat. Kadat, kadat, ka multiplication. Ka glory, ka glory, ka glory. You are selling, others are selling, but you must sell more than others are selling. Why? The glory. I said the glory. According to Leviticus chapter number 10, I think it is. We command old breakthroughs. Old breakthroughs. Old breakthroughs. There are transactions. Thank you. Leviticus 26, verse 9 and 10. Uh, he says, you shall eat the old harvest. Th there are transactions that you have not been able to eat of. That means that there will be omega, and then you can eat of them. Old breakthroughs. Because when transactions get old, you tend to give up on them. You, you tend to stop talking about them. I prophesy transactions you'd stop talking about. May they come to the forefront. May they come to the forefront. And also the new ones are coming. He says, I'll bring the old and the new. And I prophesy Luke 252. Any prophecy you see about Jesus, since you're in Christ, it, it is also your portion. Jesus increased in wisdom. May you increase in wisdom. I said, may you have the wisdom of the gods. May you have the understanding of the gods. May you have the knowledge of the gods. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. People will perceive you differently. They will look at you as a person of higher stature. Higher stature. May you reach the fullness of your proper stature in society. You will no longer be suppressed. You will no longer be suppressed. You can increase in wisdom and in stature and in stature. I declare and I decree your business model. It will increase in stature. It must increase in stature. And then you must receive favor with God. May you receive favor with heaven. He said, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Ah, that thing can be changed. I said, that thing can be changed. I said, it can be changed. Because you can increase in favor with God. I know you came from a case family, but you will increase in favor. You'll be favored more than all your other siblings put together because you are proclaiming this. May favor increase. Increase in favor. Increase in favor with God. And finally with men. I prophesy. Men who need to favor you must favor you. I said men who need to favor you must favor you. I declare and I decree favor amongst the nobles. I want men with capacity to change your life to favor you. Thank God for favor with the small, small people. We thank God. But we also want favor with the big, big people. People who with one signature can change the tra trajectory of your destiny. I said just one signature. I said this is the week of that signature. Believe the Lord your God will be established. Believe the prophet and you will prosper. I said this is the week of that signature. The one you've been waiting for. The million dollar signature. I prophesy it over your life. I decree favor with the signatory. Favor with the signatory. If I favor the secretary, it, it might not help me if she cannot sign. I said favor with the one who signs. The one who's signing must call for your documents. 
Bring me the chronicles. Bring me the checks. Bring me the payments. Is there anyone who has not been paid? Bring me. I said this week they are bringing you. They are calling you. Uh, they are calling you. The authorities are calling you with your delayed payment. I feel that in my spirit. I said there are people you are being called this week. You will be called this week. And remember John 6, 63. The words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are money. They are money. These words I'm speaking, they are money. Because a life without money is a frustration. I speak money. I'm the money prophet. The word I speak is money. I summon it. I summon it. Money. Vikre Mari. Vikre signature. I decree. Transactions concluded. Deal sealed. Hallelujah. 